When one is being rebirthed, one is in the flow, one is in trust, one is in the knowing. So how do you do this? Simple. Take time to connect with your breath. Every single time, the heart is breathing. It is creating expansion. Your heart is gifting you life right now in this moment. Hello, Michelle. A warm welcome to the show. Hi, Yannicka. Thank you for having me today. I'm so excited to be here with you. <laughs> I'm really happy that you came on to the show. And I got to say that we tried this once and the tech was not with us. So I'm excited <laughs> that you're here again, you know, making this possible because I really wanted you to have, I really wanted to have you on the show because you are uh, channeling the Council of Eight. And the last time we did a channeling and it was just so profound. And I know there's so many burning questions out there. So I'm really excited to hear what the, your guides uh, have to say. Uh, but before we do that, I'd love to hear about your story because I know that this hasn't always been uh, like it is today. You're having a beautiful life. You just came from Egypt. You're having a beautiful husband. You're channeling. You have clients. It just seems like, yeah, living on a cloud, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> you're so happy and cheerful. But, but there's a story behind it and there's a struggle and there's a transformation. So mm. I would love for you to share, you know, how you went from having that past life and all of a sudden being this channeler you are today. Um, thank you so much. And, and, you know, I'll, I'll keep it as short as I can, because I know that as human beings, we have linear time that we live in. And uh, so, yes, my story was very much my background is, uh, and in short, I was born in Zimbabwe and uh, in 1981, my parents left Zimbabwe and my dad was a Rhodesian soldier. Uh, and my parents were young when they had my oldest brother and myself, and we decided to leave to go to South Africa. And I had grown up um, not knowing at the time when I was five years old, I was sexually abused by my uncle, uh, which was my mom's younger brother. And uh, I didn't know it was a thing, you know, I didn't know it was a, it was, it was an issue. I didn't know it was abuse at the time. Uh, you know, I was told, keep a secret. My dad being in the, in the, the Rhodesian war, uh, being a young father had his own internal struggles. And, uh, there was a lot of alcohol, uh, that my parents consumed. We had, you know, often you think back as a, as a, as an adult go, well, I had a pretty decent life. Well, I did, but I didn't, you know, when you start to dive deep on these, in these internal journeys, I came to realize that a lot of my life I'd lived on these stress levels. My mom, bless her cotton socks, she's passed over into spirit, but my mom was an incredibly uh, controlled, angry woman. And, uh, and she projected a lot of her anger onto myself and my older brother. Um, you know, the way we grew up, we got smacked a lot. Just to give an example, at the age of 16, I was in the supermarket and I bat chatted my mom and my mom just slapped me across the face. And I was mortified because everybody from high school was there. We always were buying fresh bread and milk after, after school. Uh, so we went through this move, which I now know immigrating to New Zealand, that it couldn't have been easy for my parents to have had uh, the, you know, the move from Zimbabwe to South Africa. Uh, I had bulimia when I was a, um, a teenager. It was something that I, you know, it was just not, I was just, I was just unhappy. I was angry, not knowing I was angry. It was like the subconscious thing that was playing through me. And I was a dancer, so I don't have the typical ballerina figure. So I would look at people who were thinner than me, again, comparison as a teenager. And at the age of 16, I lost my best friend. I was 16 and a half. She had had a, um, a kidney transplant. And she had ended up uh, being in Johannesburg's hospice. And I remember sitting as this young kid, watching her parents just go for a counseling session and the counselor and the parents walking out. And I remember being surrounded by all these terminally ill people and thinking, how do the counsellors handle this? And I'm sharing this little bit about my story because what's so fascinating is fast forward to me being 33, 33 34 years old, and I ended up being becoming a part-time caregiver at hospice. So throughout my journey, as much as there's been some real hardships, uh, a lot of trauma, uh, you know, my mom, again, 
was just she projected a lot of her pain onto me being the oldest daughter. So there were things that she would say to me, do not let a man dominate you. What I'd come to find out when I was older is that my dad had had affairs when when they were younger, when, you know, we were young kids. And, you know, this internal programming my mom would put onto me, and I didn't realize, um, I had no perception of it's good or bad, it just is. This is my mom. I didn't know any different. But what had actually happened was I was searching for love. I was searching for somebody to make me feel better. And I was always looking for the love on the outside. And uh, I basically, you know, got involved with guys at, uh, when I was 18, 19, 20 years old. And a lot of them had cheated. And I kept thinking, what's wrong with me? What have I done? Like, but this was a pattern that was just being recreated for me to show up for myself. And then in 1998, I was 24 years old and I was a sales rep for many, many years. And um, I was driving on my side of the road and I'd looked down to put a straw into a cool drink. And I was driving slowly and I'd collided with something. I didn't know what it was. I was in farm territory. So I thought it was a dog. I thought it was a horse. And there were four people who had stopped on the opposite side of the road. And it turns out that I'd um, my car was a write-off, like I knew it hit something big because my whole windscreen had cracked and my car was smoking. And these four people had gone to go and look and they said I'd knocked over um, a woman, a grown woman. Mm -hmm. And I was mortified. Um, you know, I stood there in absolute shock. And I, I kind of um, went into the space of, like not knowing, not knowing what was right, not knowing what was wrong. I had hurt my neck. They'd rushed me to the hospital. And two to three months later, I'd received a phone call from this person's mother. And it turns out, Yannicka, that this mom had said to me that it was her 14-year-old daughter. Mm. And I was devastated. You know, um, my ex-boyfriend at the time that had come to the scene of the accident had shared with me, it was a grown woman. And it doesn't make any sense to anybody to, to you know, it was broad daylight. Um, uh, I feel it's very important to share because um, I've been judged about the story. How come I didn't land up in jail when I had a, a year and a half court case go on? And they eventually had acquitted me to show I was on my side of the road. And the mother had said to me she'd had an accident at the age of seven and then at the age of 14, um, you know, the mom had phoned me to find out how I was doing. And... You know, there's always these earth angels, in my opinion, that show up in life at a time that we may not be aware that they're earth angels. For me, this mom was an absolute earth angel. And sometimes I can share the story without crying. And there's other times where my heart just goes, oh, my soul, what a beautiful woman, you know, to have actually find, wanted to find out how I was. And yeah, the tears come. <laughs> um, but the fact that she cared was just still to this day clearly affects me that she took the time to actually go, wow, this affected somebody like me, you know, and it was the most beautiful um, moment of kind of this clarity of like, wow, this woman's lost a daughter, but she's still taking the time to find out how I was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, within that year, I'd had a lot of trauma. I'd gone through a massive break breakup um, and then I was made redundant and then two months later um, knocked over this young girl so within three within a year I'd gone through three life-changing events but I didn't know that I'd had to go for counseling nobody had said to me in those years Mish do you think it's a good idea that you go and see somebody so I partied hard that's pretty much what I did I can't continued living in this the space of struggle and I partied hard and um, and then I'd then fallen in love with a guy. Two months later, we got engaged. It's just crazy. I was looking for the knight in shining armor to just rescue me and make me feel better. And again, love me. Hopefully somebody will just love me and accept me for who I am with all my bells and whistles and my craziness and my controlling issues. And, you know, a lot of it came from my mom. A lot of it I'd learned from my mom. So we then got married all in all, eight months. And four years later, we had a baby girl, moved from South Africa to London, then came backwards and forwards between London and South Africa. And then guess what happened? Another lifelong pattern. 
he decided to have an affair. It took me a year and a half to two years to find out that he was having an affair. My mom saw all the signs and I was like, no, 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 this, this, this can't be happening. My family was everything to me. And I used to describe it as when I eventually found out the truth, I described it as um, somebody had bitten me by my Achilles tendon and it like somebody had pulled me down. And that's how it felt. It felt like everything that I'd been through up until this point in time was not as severe as having this little baby girl and then finding out that my ex-husband had, had had an affair. And it brought me to a standstill where I'd actually went to go see a clairvoyant. And this young gentleman said to me, Michelle, you need to find out how to love yourself. And I was like, just help me with my anger. Like I'm, I'm so angry at men. And I didn't realize how deeply angry I was at masculine energy. And I shared a little bit about how my mom had planted some seeds because of her own projection, her own pain that she was going through. She had chosen to stay with my dad. Um, it was something that I chosen not to do. I decided to go through a divorce. And this was when I started to wake up to myself. I just lived life in the space of being in fight, flight or fright. Fight, flight or fright. And I didn't know any difference until I knew the difference of okay, what does it mean to have a calm nervous system? What does it mean to be in control of my thoughts? What does it mean to actually start loving myself, to start taking responsibility for myself? And then I went on this journey of deep dives on these different courses. I then went to study counseling skills. I studied NLP. Um, I studied channeling. I did a yoga teacher training. And the bizarre thing about what I'm sharing right now is that I was not academic at all. I literally left high school and went straight into a job. And I always thought I was going to be a housewife. Like that was my, my end goal. <laughs> so um, I basically went on this deep dive at the age of 38. And I am now married with my second husband. We have a little um, boy together. And I started to study and I started to just be intrigued with human nature and realizing that we are these energetic beings and we have these emotions that, that my emotions were so deep, my anger was so deep, but there was a lot of sadness that was underneath the anger and that needed to come up. So I was quite intrigued with how much I was learning, but how much I was shedding at the same time. Like I feel like there was these layers and layers and layers of intergenerational trauma from both my mom's side and my dad's side. So just to give an example of what I remember was my dad driving one day and, and being um, in the space in Rhodesia, we used to be in a convoy. So there would be a tank, an army tank in the front and an army tank at the back. And a lot of us used to drive, you know, and I remember, I remember this memory of looking at my dad driving, but holding the steering wheel and his knuckles were, were white and I could feel the tension. I could feel the fear as a little girl in doing sort of a, um, a past life, life regression or past life hypnosis, you know, going into myself. There's a very, very amazing, uh, well, there's a lot of amazing books out there, but the one that I started with was Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life. And this was gifted to me even before I knew that my ex-husband was having an affair. So again, do you see me being 16 and a half years old, being in hospice, then a friend gifting me this book and was like, what is, what is, what do you mean you can heal your life? Like I had no idea what that meant. So again, spirit were guiding me and leading me to where I am today. But it took a huge amount of work. I'm still on this path. I'm still on this journey of releasing a lot of my stuff. Um, and it is, it's quite fascinating. Um, I'm, just a, I'm just a very honest person. So please forgive me if I'm overstepping a boundary here. But when my husband and I were having um, a coffee this morning, and it was so special to hear you say, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm quite happy and I'm bubbly. Like literally 10 minutes before we connected, I was like, <laughs> and I was having a moment. He says, are you annoyed with me? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just feeling like I've got fire in my belly this morning. <laughs> and I was like, I've got to get this out. I've got to get this out. And my husband and I have taught each other to just hold space. And I say, I need to vent. And then stuff comes up unconsciously that I didn't even realize that I was holding on to. But those are the moments of being present and saying, okay, I've just got to let this go. Whereas before I used to sit in my emotions, I used to sit in them for sometimes days and weeks. And I learned that that's what my mom used to do. My mom used to be a sulker and we weren't allowed to sulk in our home. So I would just go quiet. I would become internal. And I've learned through our time is just have the moment, express the emotion if there's emotion to express 
And this is what I've, I've come to realize that the more I've let go of these layers and these levels of anxiety, frustration, resentment, oh gosh, my resentment was huge towards men and towards my mom. And when my mom passed over two years ago, my journey with my mom started to, for me to start releasing what I'd hold, held onto for a very, very long time. And as I started to release these different emotions, I started to elevate and I started to feel lighter in my heart and lighter in my body. And I started to find my voice. I thought I had my voice because my sarcasm was very, uh, it was very clear. But my sarcasm was hurting me, but it was also hurting others because I used to make jokes at other people's expenses. And this is what I'd learned was from my masculine energy, my father's side, is that's what my dad used to do. And there's, there's these parts of me that I didn't really like. And I thought, no, I've got to change this. I wanted to change for me, but I wanted to change for my baby girl at the time when I was going through my divorce. And I'd chosen to bring my ex-husband into my space with his girlfriend because I wanted what was good for my my daughter and I did some crazy stuff you know when you look back that beautiful word hindsight <laughs> hindsight is a fabulous word but it's exactly that it's looking back so I look back a lot and I was like oh my god why didn't I do this and why didn't I change that and and I'm not the woman that I am today that I was then so the beauty of 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 my sharing and it is sometimes when I share it it can be very challenging for me because sometimes people you know, come with their own perceptions, their own judgments. Um, I've learned, I'm still learning to forgive my uncle. It comes up in little moments in time where I'm like, oh, there's still a little bit of anger. There's still a little bit of residue there, but I have confronted him. I've sent him a letter. He's apologized to me. And this took me 15 years, Yannicka, of working through my own internal, in, internal trauma. And as I let go of a lot of my stress responses, my own internal trauma, the own, my way of thinking, I started to realize that I was incredibly connected to spirit. And one of my very first clients that I was counseling at the time, she was sitting opposite me and I pictured her with a little baby girl. And I didn't even know this. And I said, oh, I can see you with a baby girl and she's got dark hair, she's got beautiful blue eyes and she's in a dress. And she said, how do you know this, Michelle? I said, I can see her in your arms. And then she said to me, I have no idea how you know this, but I had lost my baby girl. She was still born. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was like, whoa, okay, this is, woof, this is, this is different. And then I started to get and receive all these messages. I would just meet somebody in the supermarket and then I would say, listen, this is what I'm seeing. And they'd say, Michelle, how do you know this? And slowly but surely, as I brought different teachers and mentors into my space, my one mentor, interesting enough, who became a very good friend of mine, we shared similarities in our timelines of our past. She was older than me, but she'd also been sexually abused when she was younger. She'd also knocked over and killed a young girl. Um, her ex-husband had also had an affair. Wow. But there were these, the, yeah, it was, it was even to the degree, now this is going to sound quite weird, like, if I had to come close to the camera, which I'm not going to come too close to show my wrinkles, but I've got this little, little hair that grows. Okay. I know it sounds weird, but this friend of mine has got exactly the same on her side of her, on her cheek. It was just like, no, this is, you know, those soul connections, those soul groups that we bring into our space. She helped me to heal because she was healing a lot of herself and she helped me to heal. And I'm always, always, always grateful to my beautiful friend, Vicky, not the easiest teacher because she pushed me and she pushed me hard. So we used to sit in these, in these, in these teachings together where she would write on the board and she would, but then I started hearing different voices. So I was watching her, but then I was like, who's this? And I used to play, I used to, uh, I used to keep myself small. I used to play small all the time and always had this, I always had this thing that other people knew more than me which I still believe that to this day because other people have been on their journeys longer than me. And I'm always wanting others to, I want to learn from others. So um, I believe that my spirit team bring in human beings to help me to get to the next level. And um, so when we were in these teaching moments, I would always hear these different voices and I'd say, well, who are you? And I could feel I was there, but I wasn't there. And I never asked the questions like Vicky used to say to me, 
ask questions, Michelle. Just keep asking, keep asking the universe. And I say, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. She'd say, you've got all the wisdom inside of you. And I say, I don't know what you mean. And I used to listen to Louise Hay CDs and Wayne Dyer CDs. And I used to phone her and say, I don't know what Wayne Dyer means. And let me tell you, when I say that this woman had patience, <laughs> she had pa the patience of Joe because I think I drove her batty. But she loved me. She loved me unconditionally or loves me unconditionally. And she taught me so much about energy that it was kind of like she was teaching me, but I was here and I didn't understand so much of what she was teaching me 14, 13, 12 years ago, and now I'm catching up to that. So to go to my channeling, they were always around, but I didn't know who they were. And then we immigrated seven years ago from South Africa to New Zealand. And it's like I went to this deep, dark depression and the wheels came off. And every bit of PTSD that I thought I'd worked through, my trauma that I thought I'd worked through, it just came up again for the healing that was needed. And I was so frustrated with myself and I was so upset because I was like, shit, I thought I'd done this. I thought I'd done this work. But there was more. There was more that needed to come up and there was more that needed to come and needed to be healed in my marriage, in my second marriage. You know, there's, there's a saying that we're in feeling all the time. And it's, it, there's a saying that, you know, when you, you feel somebody's vibration, and you may not know what that means at the time, but, you know, we, we were brought together and I could feel my husband's vibration, but we were mirroring each other. We were mirroring each other. And then coming to a new country with two young children just projected us into a different space of, all righty, what are we going to do? Are we going to dig deeper? Are we going to lick our wounds and stay in our victimhood? Are we going to blame the world? Are we going to blame the South African government? Or are we going to take charge of our lives? For me, I sort of taking responsibility. My husband continued in fight or flight mode. And, and it's been interesting to see the, the dynamic of our relationship because what I've learned and a big thing for me in this lifetime is to find forgiveness, not only for myself. So to go back to my sexual abuse story, I had to learn to forgive my five-year-old self. And when I, I, I had to, I, like I said, I, I almost went into this massive depression and I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get out of this? Like I, I've got two young kids. This is the choice that we made. And I started to just go back to basics, looking at myself in the mirror, reading my Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life, starting to work with my belief systems. It kind of felt like I was going back to square one again, but it was good for me. Because what happened was it was quicker. I was I was evolving quicker at a, at a rapid rate. And I would, I, like I said, I wouldn't sit in my feelings. I'd be like, okay, there's the feeling. There's a the frustration. And I've punched a huge amount of pillows. <laughs> it's wonderful having an ex-husband. Because <laughs> if you think that you still got resentment, I would just think about my ex-husband and I would punch my pillows. <laughs> so bless his cotton socks. I love him very, very much. Um, but it was kind of like that. Oh, what am I still angry at? Oh, there's men to be angry at. Okay. And I would want to get it out of my body. And then again, I started to hear these voices. And then I started to come into a space of stillness because my body didn't know how to be quiet. My chatter in my head was da 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 da, -da. And, and, and then I realized, like, I always had to be busy, 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 cleaning the house, doing this, doing that. And then I had to find a way of stilling my body. And when I started to bring myself into a quiet space, they started to talk to me and I'd say, well, who are you? And then in my healings, because I started with clients, like I was working in South Africa and I was, I'd have clients on the table and my hands started to move. And then I started to, I use a lot of music in my therapy and I started to sing these songs and I, I would get to these notes and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm, I've got Lady Gaga inside of me. <laughs> Like, that's how I used to think. I can do this. I can sing. I knew I was a singer. <laughs> After sessions, no, wasn't the singer. The, the notes were just, they weren't there. And then I started to ask, well, who are you? And then I got shown the Council of Eight. And I was like, well, who's the Council of Eight? And they'd say, angelic beings of light who are once walked the earth planes. And they showed me they were from the 15th dimension. I was like, where is that? And what I've come to learn the universe is vast. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter. They've shared, they've shared this with me. It's countless, countless people. Countless, that's the incorrect word. I'm going to say that again. 
beautiful clients that have come into my space. But they've shared this, that it doesn't matter who they are. It's the labels that I was seeking. It was the label that I was trying. You know, you start off and you go, how do you share their wisdom? How, who are you guys? I've got, to, I've got to tell people. Like, it's important to give people a name. And they said, Michelle, what's important is the message that comes through. Mm. And they've been waiting for me. They've showed me that, that this has been a big part of my destiny, a big part of my path. But I wasn't ready. And I doubted a huge amount. I doubted them. And, uh, and I've learned that it's been about me doubting me. And over time, I've completely just learned to be in acceptance of the messages that they've shared. And I don't remember a lot of the messages. Like maybe afterwards, if you and I discuss a few things, I'll be like, oh, okay, yep, I remember this and this and this. Mm. But what's been amazing, and even going to Egypt recently, there was a woman on our trip, Yannicka, who had shared with me that she'd had a session with a council of eight, and they said to her, you are going to Egypt soon. And so is Michelle. Michelle doesn't even know this yet. I had completely forgot that. So when she had shared that with me, I was like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> and that's been the trusting of the messages coming through. And they're here to walk with us on our journeys. They plant seeds. They speak in... Um, they speak metaphorically. Um, and what I love about their messages, and I've asked them this because I like simple. I, I resonate with simple. Like I said, I was, I've never been academic. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person who learns through experiences. Uh, I've had to ask the universe to make my experiences not so severe and not so, so, so traumatic. So there was a pattern that I had to change because I'm like, I'm experiential. Teach me through experience. Well, be careful what you wish for. Because a lot of the times my experiences had to be like massive. And then I was like, okay, can we, can we make the experiences a little bit easier? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so all right, this beautiful connection and, um, and I share what they share and they come through for me in a different vibration. I take a few breaths and it's Michelle, the personality steps aside and then they come through and they share what they've got to share. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Michelle. I think it's so important that we share our stories. I think that's very healing and for people to see what transformation is possible. And I remember when I was in my deep darkness, when I heard stories like that, I could actually start to believe, you know, I'm in this darkness, I'm in this hole, but I see this other person have come so far and also have been in this darkness, then it's got to be possible for me. And I also think that maybe you wouldn't have become such a great channeler that you are today if you hadn't gone through that struggle and that darkness. And I think we're ready now to perhaps meet the Council of Light so that we get most out of our, our time today and that people can really experience you as a channeler and the messages that will come through today, which I'm excited to see what will unfold and come through. And I have some questions from my audience, actually, that I have noted down here. Uh, so would you like to bring them on? How is this happening? Okay, I'd love to. And if I could just share something with you with what you've just said and thank you so much for the acknowledgement you know the biggest thing for me about being a channeler is we're still here to have our human experience so thank you for allowing me to share you know a massive part of my story and it's the human experience and that's what I love about the channeling and what they share with us it's about us being human and they bring up Akashic records they share blueprint you know they, they share past lives which are different timelines and they're funny they're very humorous when they come through and uh, so i take a few breaths and mm -hmm. this is just my little process um you know they connected to me but it's just something it took me a long time first of all to regulate my nervous system because when i first started chilling my hands used to get really really ice cold and my body would vibrate like this like da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. and um and then I used to keep my eyes closed because as a psychic medium, you know, I see a lot. And it was just my safety mechanism to really trust the, the messages that were coming through. And then 
just in the last few months, actually, I've opened up my eyes. And um, they said, you ready, Michelle? I'm like, no, I'm not. Mm -mm, I'm not ready yet just yet. And they're like, you ready? <laughs> so I really had to trust in them. Um, and so, yes, I take a few breaths and I bring them through and I'll see you on the other side. Okay. <laughs> They are delightful. I just wanted to let you guys know that. And um, and they, they bring through tonings and that through my voice too. So um, I, I never know where we're going to go. We welcome you today to this wonderful reconnection between yourself and Michelle and all of the beings of light that are here that are showing up for this space of time in this connection that is, may we say, long overdue. We know and we thank you, beloved one, for being the light, for being in service to others. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We feel it is important to offer you the gratitude of the universal togetherness. What do we mean by this? As you are well aware, and many humans have forgotten this, that there is an interconnectedness that happens. Notice how we say that, that happens, not happens in the future, did happen, was happening, is happening, it happens. There is a connection right now in this moment. There is an open heartedness between the two of you. There is a connection that is deep within each and every single one of you. So we are here to honor the human beings who are showing up for themselves. We have messages to impart, we know that. We have messages to share, yet over and above everything else. The messages are coming through to obliterate. And when one is in a space of obliteration, one is in a space of openness. As Michelle has described to you today, in this moment, in time, that there are layers within a human being. There are levels within a human being. There are moments within your awareness, your consciousness, your evolution. It is up to you in terms of engaging in the openness of the oneness of connection or in the openness in the wonderfulness of life. We see each and every single cell as a universal source, as a universal guide, as a universal tool. And we ask of you, when you all see your soulful selves as we see you, you will notice that there is a pause, you will notice that you are individually sourceful souls. Yet humans have created separation. Notice how we use Michelle's hands. When there is separation, there is an unstuckness that happens. There is a pool, a universal pool that happens. We say for humanity, to you who are watching here today, that when one is in their soulful selves, one is in a place of observation, one is in a place of noticing, one is in a space of discernment. So where are we going with this? Take the time to pause. Be within the moment of honoring yourselves. There is this gravitational pull within the grids, within the ley lines. We know that within the devastation of the wars, the wars, the wars, the wars, the wars, the wars, the wars there are many magnitudes that are creating much of the fluxation that is happening within yourselves right now. You are well aware it is about your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts. And when there is this gravitational flux that is happening with all of you, 
this is what happens within Mother Earth. There is shifting that is happening. You are all well aware of this. And we ask of you to stay within your pause. Many of you may look at this as a surrender. When one has their hands up, they are in a surrender. We say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Surrender to yourselves. And as you surrender to yourselves, there will be more of the openness, of the togetherness, of what you are all wanting. And please notice, it is not out there that the future is happening. It is in here, right now, in this body, in this body, in this body, in this room. Everything is consciousness. Everything is moving. Right now, in this moment, in time. We hope this makes sense. Do you have any questions for us, please? Yes, I do. And I have some questions from my audience as well. And I've just noted them down on my paper. And uh, some of my audience are wondering about relationships, especially when they feel that they're on their spiritual journey, evolving, uh, learning all these methods, techniques, manifestations, and then their partner is sort of not interested in that. Now, how the question it revolves around how do we deal with that? Is that just a matter of accepting that we're different or that one should, you know, maybe uh, that the partner is not right for them? Or how can we deal with that when we are growing so much and the partner is sort of not into these perspectives? You finished off exactly where we were going to start out, which is it is all about perspective. Humans, you have and have and have and have and have and have much to hold on to. What do we mean by this? When humans are holding on, holding on, holding on, holding on, they have a tight grip, do they not? And when one is saying to themselves, I need to hold on to this relationship because this is what makes me feel safe. You are well aware, as Michelle was sharing her story, she had said she was seeking love on the outside, yet love was always on the inside. She just did not know it within her soulful self at the time. So to answer the question, it is simple. Let go and be free. <laughs> so simple. You humans make it so complicated. So when humans hold on, hold on, you are not doing this. You are not doing that. I'm elevated. I am. Why? Why? We are over-exaggerating. Hence, we have chosen this one as our channel, as there is an expression that you humans have within the face. When one is holding, 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 there is not free flow that is happening. The universe is never stopping. We are always, always, always coming through. What do we mean by this? When one is allowing the coming through and the letting go of what is, something else shows up. So we say to you all individually, let go, be in your lane. It is simple. Is Michelle able to timelessly teleport into your country? No, she is not. Yet on this wonderful mechanism that has been gifted to you humans, which you call a computer, you are able to connect different time zones, yet here you are. So where are we going with this? Stay in your lane. Keep reflecting on your soulful self and stay in a space of love. And when there is only love, the other human may or may not flip the switch. Yet when there's projection, 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 there is protection, 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 protection. Do you see how we are throwing the energy? We could throw the energy your way, yet it is in different lanes. Hence, there is a term, all ways. 
Michelle mentioned a few tools, a few modalities that she had invested in with herself, did she not? And there are tools that show up in the present moment. It could be a book. It could be a human. We are always, in many ways, delivering the magic hmm. when the human is ready. Hmm. Beautiful. Uh, another question that came in is, can you share the process of choosing our lives? And obviously that is a huge process probably, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it could take a lifetime to explain that. But if you could share a little bit about how we choose our lives before we come down to this incarnation and how detailed it is. For instance, speaking of relationships, is it so that we have planned to meet uh, one certain soul partner and that we have planned to be together with a soul partner a certain uh, a certain time uh, or like how specific is it this is a great question and we think the easiest perhaps the most simple way of gifting this to you as humans is think of a spider's web this is how you are created. A spider starts at a starting point. Your soul starts at a starting point. And then it goes here, and then it goes there, 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 and then it goes there. And it has energetic imprints that it is picking up on, karmic patterns that it is picking up on, shifts that are happening. And at a time, Perhaps when the web has developed and become bigger, there may be an entrapment of a certain insect on the web. When there is an entrapment, this is where the soul, the soul feels as if it is stuck. So we hope this is making sense as we want to give a very clear picture as to what your processes are. This organ that is in this skull is highly, highly highly developed yet this organ this organ that is in this soul is remarkably miraculous so when humans choose to listen to this and not only this this is where your soul guides you so once again we share with you the experience of a spider if any of you have watched a spider create its web, it takes time, does it not? It is planning intricately in which direction to go, which pole to connect to which pole, which plant to connect to which plant. And as it is catching its prey, this is where the soul goes through an evolutionary expansiveness. So when one is feeling trapped, when one is questioning, questioning, questioning their relationship and they are in protection mode, they are protecting their hearts, are they not? We say break free. We say at times the spider web will break. We say at times you will rise above. The soul already has the imprints of what it is requesting in order for the growth to happen in this meat suit, in this physical body. Your processes are all different, yet many of you humans have been told, this is the way that you need to do this. Please notice how we say that. It becomes very robotic. When one is pushing and prodding and poking and being conditioned in a certain way, we say, uncondition yourselves it is simple you have choice choose to deep dive into what aligns with your magic you are all miracles this is the only way that we see you individually we know that there are tumultuous times happening on earth right now and again we are only here to express love Love defines unity. Love is 
a solid structure. Love is the interwoving of everything. And please notice how we said that. Not interweaving, interwoving of everything. We give humans a different way of interpreting what this helps them to stay within. Many of you, you are well aware your thoughts are already attracting, yet the soul has the knowing. This is the antenna, this is the antenna, yet this is the knowing. So everyone's process is different. Forgiveness is compassion. Compassion is forgiveness. Your human language is limiting. Yet in the soul's processing, there is no judgment. There only is the source of oneness. We hope this answers your question. Um, yeah, it was a different perspective that I uh, that I expected, uh, but uh, it's just so funny how I look for this uh, left-brained answers, and I get answers that are sort of I know this from a higher vibration. <laughs> um, <laughs> wonderful. Um, yes, uh, another question is there. What do we say to you, Yannicka? Yeah. Please know, life is not complicated. Hmm. When one uncomplicates, when one unravels, when one feels wobbly, when one is not too sure, this is the vibration, this is the vibration, this is the vibration, you are well aware. Michelle was sharing, openly sharing as she does, that there are moments in time when one has a wobbly, when one feels stuck. This is what dummies you humans down. <laughs> How many of you feel as if you are hitting your head against the wall? Yet, when one is open, this is where humans redefine what is of value to them. And it is exactly that, opening up. When you look at the stars at night in your beautiful country, you are very, 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 very welcomed to look up into the darkness, yet you would not see the stars shining bright if it was not the dark. Mm. Do you see how everything is complementing? We give you a different way of interpreting this antenna. So simple. <laughs> so interesting because I'm feeling it and I'm feeling something happens to me like I'm going from my mind to my heart. Correct. And um, I guess there's a question around, so when you're saying opening up, to me that is surrendering. And could you say something to all of us who might be struggling with really trusting life? Because surrendering to me and letting go means that I need to trust. And can I do that? Like Michelle just spoke about her controlling uh, needs. And I can identify with that. And I think a lot of other people can identify with that. Like having the need to control, which obviously comes from fear. However, that is pretty stuck in my system and I'm well aware of it. So could you speak a little bit to that letting go? Like how do you start doing that when you don't quite know if you can really trust life looking at what's happening around us in the world today? We will give you a simple explanation and we have shared this many, many times up until this point in time. When you were conceived, there were millions and millions and millions of sperm, one egg. The power lies within. Notice how we said that. So there was a 
connection. And as you were coming into this world, you were growing inside. And not once did anyone have to make you grow. It was this unknown trusting. And as you've come into this world, there are times, there are moments in time, you talk about the word trust. Yet we ask of you, what does it even mean to trust one's soulful self? It is simple. Trust is as easy as walking forward. For those of you who have legs, you walk forward in life. You are not walking backwards. You <laughs> walk forward. And when one takes one step forward and another step forward and another step forward and becomes consciously aware that everything is vibration, every single thing is in movement right now. You are able to hear us coming through Michelle. You are able to see her mouth moving. You are able to see her expressions. You are able to see that we are working with her hands. Yet, we are moving the molecules right now in this moment. Yet, it is pure. Life is pure. You are able to see through the glass, are you not? You are able to see through the water. It may seem a little bit murky. It may not. So, how do you choose to look at life. Are you looking at it through a peephole? Are you looking at it through a tunnel? Or are you looking at it as the fullness in the offering of being rebirthed? When one is being rebirthed, one is in the flow, one is in trust, one is in their knowing. So how do you do this? Simple. Take time to connect with your breath. You come into this life with breath. It is the first thing that is wanting to be heard when you are in the stomach. Can we hear the heartbeat? Can we hear the heartbeat? Yet there is a breath in every single heartbeat. Are you aware of this? Every single time the heart is breathing, it is creating expansion. Your heart is gifting you life right now in this moment. And not once are we saying, okay, Yannicka's heart, beat. Oh, hang on, Michelle's heart, beat. We forgot about Yannicka's heart, beat. Breathe. Thank your breath. Thank your breath. Thank your breath. Your breath knows when to expand. Yet when one is holding on in a space of unsureness and not trusting, this is the vibration that you are holding on to. So when one looks at life as an orchestra, when one looks at life as the music that you've all been gifted with, one starts to walk and glide and there is a moment of knowing. And as you are, you are right now in this moment, dropping in, Yannicka. You are dropping in. You can feel your expansion in your heart, can you not? Yes. So as the vibration of us that are coming through right now, this is exactly where and how and what we see for humanity is as each individual drops into their heart space, to their knowing, to their moment of connection, the moment of compassion, the moment of openness. This is where so much unfolds for you humans. Yet when humans have been told that this is what has to happen in the controlling, uh, you humans are all so tired of yourselves. <laughs> you love overcomplicating life, do you not? <laughs> Yet the universe delightfully gifts you all with your breath, with your heartbeat. As you are well aware, everything is interconnected. And as everything is interconnecting in the flow 
of harmony. This is where the truth, the truth sets you all free. Not the truth, the truth. Do you notice the difference? Thank you. Uh, I know we need to wrap up soon. Uh, however, do you have a la last message for our audience today and maybe about what's coming as well for humanity? We know that many humans at this moment in time are questioning, questioning, questioning what the future is about. The future is happening right now in this moment as everything is a hologram. Hence, we talk about the movement that is happening through you right now. Every cell is talking, communicating to one another. There are cells that are dying off and there are cells that are regenerating right now in this moment in time. So where to from now? There are moments in time that we know within the next one to two years in your 2024, 2025, where many humans are waking up to themselves to know that there is the old paradigms, the old way that does not serve you no longer. So when humans say to themselves, this is the timeline that the Council of Eight have gifted us, that timeline is happening right now. As remember, there is no time within the universal forces. Many of you are turning to your teams. Many of you are wondering who your guides are. And we ask of you to stay within the connection, 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 stay within the connection of nature. Nature gifts you all, your breath, your pause, your newness. It is simple. Turn to nature. And when one turns to nature, one is looking within their natural selves. And we say to you, please take time to love. And as you take time to love, there will be so many shifts universally, energetically, emotionally, when one is connecting with the emotions, the emotions are moving through you. When one is holding on to the emotion, they are suppressing, they are suppressing, they are bringing a different vibration into their body, they are creating diseases within their bodies. The internal struggle is no longer serving humanity. Hence, many of you are saying, we are seeking different and we applaud you, we applaud you, we applaud you for this time of change. Everything that you are seeing is happening right now the way we see it and know it to be true, where you are all finding your space of compassion, kindness. Think of it as it is a time of excavating. And when one is excavating, they are getting rid of what no longer serves them. This is a time of where all of you have woken up to yourselves. As we know, humans are miracles. And we know that these times are dense. They feel dark at times. Many of you are wanting to check out. Many of you are wanting to go back to your teams. Many of you are wanting to go back to the light. Yet we know that there are those that are on their journey. And you are all steam trains. May we please end off as a steam train only moves forward. And as you're feeding it and you're feeding it and you're feeding it, it goes faster and faster and stronger. May we all bless you here collectively with the opening of your hearts. May we ask of you to please either place your hands on your heart you are welcome to close your eyes. Allow your breath to flow in and out, in and out. And visualize, visualize, visualize the future that you are all wanting right now in this moment. And please allow us to gift you with this toning of love.
We thank you, Yenika. We thank you, one. We thank you all. Namaste. Hmm. Oh. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> oh, wow. That was, that was powerful. That was really powerful. Uh, I never know what to expect, you know, when teachers are channeling and uh, this, these perspectives was really helpful. I'm so and good. yeah, and it's not just about the words, right? It's about the energy and I'm noticing it and I'm hoping that everybody else is really noticing it. So that was, uh, to me, that was really helpful. Thank, so thank you so you. much. Thank yeah. you. And, and, and you know, that's, that's my hope is that it is, it's the energy, it's the vibration. You know, mm. sometimes we get stuck on the words. We get yeah. stuck on, well, that's what they yeah. said. And what does that mean? And, and then actually it's just, it's just opening up. It's opening up the heart and just saying, okay, yeah. I'm open to receiving. That's a big learning for me too. So yeah. I just want people to know I'm still, I don't have my shit together, people. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> It's liberating to say. Yeah. Like, I think we pass the time where we put uh, spiritual teachers on pedestals. That's like not anymore. We're, we're no. teachers for each other, and I think 100%. that's a better perspective. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and that is. Thank you for sharing that because that is something that, you know, in our authenticity of who we are, mm. that is where there is such um, a moment of truth. I believe, because uh, yes, we've you know I I've. I've really battled with people who have called themselves gurus and masters and all that because we're all here to master life. We're all here to be on earth to master ourselves. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, when we put people up there, and I did this for many, many years, and even the teacher I was talking about, she said to me, Mesh, do not put me on a pedestal because at some point I'm going to disappoint you. And it's right. true. It happens. Yeah. You know, they, they, if you're on a pedestal, there's got to be a falling somewhere along the line because right. we Humans don't want human. to. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, I have three questions that I ask all my guests. And the first one is, what is self-love to you? Self-love to me is as simple as eating good food. You know, whatever that means. Um, you know, everybody will have the impression of what good food is. I just love sitting, eating simply, spending time with my family, and really just acknowledging what I have, that self-love, not what I've created, what I have in this moment. And what is happiness to you? Oh gosh, food. <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> angry. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, food is, food is, food is, <laughs> food is happiness. <laughs> Even going to Egypt now, they eat so simply, you know, and mm -hmm. and it's the first thing that you just look at these people that are just eating so simply, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is life. It's simple, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it's 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 about laughing. It's about joyfulness. It's about having fun. Happiness mm -hmm. for me is ultimately behaving like a kid, but knowing when to behave like an adult at the same time. But feeling that inner joy that children have naturally. No matter what we've all been through, if we go back to that little person inside of us, sliding down a slide, doing a cartwheel, playing in the sand, you know, if we have, I've got the sea, I'm blessed to have the sea, just playing, building sand castles, those little moments of joy. I think you're handling the joy pretty well. <laughs> like you are so inspiring when it comes to laughing and joy. And as so it said, you know, laugh on the, your heart behind you. It was yes. just so inspiring. Now, what is the deeper meaning of life from your perspective? Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me with the, that should like, be the first question. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like like we need to be around a fire and like let's have our <laughs> notebooks right now because this will be a big question to answer. Um, what's the deeper meaning? You know what I'm going to say it again, to have fun and to find mm -hmm. the joy. My husband and I were talking about this this morning is we get so entrenched as humans, especially I think a lot of us who have families and we get caught up in finances and mortgages. And um, I have a brother who lives in Israel and um, mm -hmm. my niece is, is, is a soldier. She's not in the war. She's at base camp. Um, but, you know, there's, it, it was just fascinating. I may quickly share this with you because – the two different realities, me being in Egypt right next door to him, but not able to visit them and him being in that fight mode. You know, it was me 
feeling all this amazingness. But in that moment, the deeper meaning for me, I was just crying and sobbing my heart out because I said to him, the flights have been canceled. I can't get to you in Israel. And he said, it's okay. Well, it's, it's clearly not meant to be. For me, the deeper meaning is holding space for individuals that are going through suffering, that are experiencing pain, that are experiencing trauma. You know, holding space is, is for me a very rare quality that many of us, because we come from our own interpretations, we come from our own perceptions, our own opinions. We want to, you know, for me to say to my brother, well, leave, just leave, you know, that's not holding space. He's in it. He's there to, to experience life in a di very different way. And his soul has chosen this journey. So for me, the deeper meaning of life is to just show up in the moment. Let's listen to one another. Let's hear one another. And let's just keep concentrating and focusing on loving one another in whichever way we are in that moment. And, you know, even if you have a confrontation or you're not happy in your own family environment or you're not happy inside of you, figure out what, what, is it, what does it mean to me right now in this moment? What does it mean for me to bring some sense of clarity? And a sense when we have clarity, my, my sense is, is that we, we surrender into what is in that moment because mm. we're going to fight. We're going to feel we're going to have moments of joy. You know, I'm, I'm on such a high right now. And I know it's sometimes hard for my family because I'm just like, Durr! like, Durr! I'm so happy. And they're just like, Jesus, just come back to earth. <laughs> you know? and, and, and it's, you know, it's having that clarity of like when you live in this space of deeper meaning, it's not the deeper meaning. I hope I'm making sense right now. It's not the deeper meaning of like, okay, there's got to, I feel some people just sit in their trauma. Like we've got to go deep. We've got to deep mm. dive. Mm. Plant medicine can do that, but come out of it, process it, integrate it, and then find the joy. That for me is the most, most important thing that I've had to learn. Stop being a victim to myself. Stop being a victim of life. Have a pity party. Um, I describe it as being like a turtle on its, on its shell on the back and being like, eh, 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 you know, have that moment, have your pity party, get it out of your body and say, okay, that's done. Now put on the music. Let's find the joy. So I hope that helps. It's a big, big, that we yeah. just say we're going to sit around the fire. <laughs> no, I, I just felt that we got a masterclass here. <laughs> in this interview today. So I'm really grateful. And I thank hope you. that everybody watching got as much out of it as I did. So thank you so uh, much, thank Michelle. And um, where can people reach you? Um, on my website, um, Michelle Carpenter, www.michellecarpenter.co.nz. And uh, please, if you feel that you would, um, I'm always honored for any client that connects with me. Um, and you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, um, pretty much the normal platforms. But my website is probably the easiest to get hold of me. So thank you so much for all you do for this world and for us. I'm very, 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 very honored. Thank you so much, Michelle. You're welcome. <laughs>